Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel today which is um, a little bit of a rant really. Have you ever tried to cancel um, a BT or a mobile contract? Why do they make it so difficult for you? Um, so this week I've been battling with BT. I'm trying to cut all my costs down in general anyway and um, BT is expensive. I'm paying, so with BT I had landline and broadband, which was, uh, I think, £78 a month, something like that, seven, uh, nearly £80 a month. And also, for some reason, I was still paying for my one of my son's SIM cards, SIM only, at nearly £70 a month. SIM only. So I managed to um, go online and uh, get the pack code on transport transfer the mobile over and um, I've actually moved me and my sons all over to eSIM um, with uh, Leica mobile and we'll pay £12 a month for I think it's 60 gigabytes of data which is more than any of us use and unlimited minutes and text £12 a month. It's madness isn't it? But trying to cancel my landline and broadband, why does it have to be so difficult? You cannot call anyone and get through. Why can't you, why don't they have an email address or something so you can just cancel it? I phoned up on Friday last week um, to cancel it. Oh, we can't cancel it today because um, the mobile's cancelling. I was like, some nonsense. I mean, it's absolute nonsense. Um, and I've been on the phone for over 20 minutes waiting to get through to these people. Actually, that's a lie. I phoned the cancellation number and I was on there for 20 minutes. I gave up and then cut, phoned the sales number and that was um, 10 minutes. Yeah, funny that, isn't it? It's quicker if you're phoning the sales line. Then, um, I know, so we can't cancel it. You've got to phone back tomorrow. Um, but we'll set the date of Friday as your notice period. Anyway, I phoned back on the Saturday. It takes half an hour to get through. And you go through all the things with someone, and then suddenly they've got to transfer you to someone else. 30 seconds you'll be on hold, he said. 15, and then they hung up on me. Ah, oh, I've had enough. So I had to, um, there's no way to get hold of them. So I, I contact, I, I filled in the bereavement form um, for myself, you know, so obviously it was incorrect. I tried to put notes in there, but the system doesn't allow you. And um, I also wrote to the complaints. Um, people saying I just want to cancel it this is the only address that I've got and the bereavement people came back to me yesterday but uh, obviously with lots of questions and I explained to them all I'm trying to do is cancel my contract why are you making this so difficult anyhow let's see if they they cancel it oh. we had the same thing with EE earlier this year I was in when I was in Antigua my sim wasn't working and I was out of contract and they'd actually sent me a new, I went to a SIM only deal. They sent me the SIM just before I went away. It didn't work. And um, there's no way to get hold of them. How are you supposed to call from your phone that doesn't work because it doesn't have a working SIM? Um, and you're not going to call them from another number when you're abroad and pay those fees, are you? In the end, I had to go through the complaints department to get it done. I just don't understand how you can sign up to these contracts that cost you, say it's a hundred pounds a month. So two and a half thousand pounds, these contracts are. You can sign up for that online in a jiffy, but try and get out of them. Oh, they make it so difficult. This is what's wrong with the UK sometimes. It's, it's not fair on the consumer. It's just, oh, it drives me mad. So my advice is eSIM all the way. And that's the other thing I don't understand. So I can buy, um, and I understand that a lot of people can't pay for these iPhones up front. They're really expensive. They're a thousand pounds, or the Google one's 500. You see, maybe Google Pixel 8 is the way to go. Um, so a thousand or 500, depending on what you go with. I mean, you can get them on credit direct from Apple and Google. I suppose you'd have to work out how much the credit was. But say you're paying for the iPhone, a thousand pounds, and then you go to Leica or one of the other ones. Um, there's so many of them now, gift gaff and all of that, and you're paying twelve pound a month. How are 
E E and well, there's no orange anymore, are there? But O two, how are they charging you a hundred pounds a month? Eighty, ninety, a hundred pounds a month. I said it doesn't make any sense. And when you're on a sim only, so a sim only is all right, sixty to eighty pounds. But it costs twelve pound with someone else, and like her on gift gap and all that, are using the same lines. Oh, it doesn't make any sense to me. And the same with broadband, you can buy a data sim now. You can buy like a net, a net gear thing. I took mine out my caravan to see if it would work in the house, and it works a treat. So I'm going to just stick with data sims now. For I think unlimited data, um, I've just got a sim come through for fifteen pound a month against BT's broadband of £70 a month. I mean, it's just mad. Anyway, uh, this is just some of the things I just don't like about England. But I think it's a really interesting thing is, if you start going through your bills and seeing how much you pay for your mobiles, your BT line, your broadband, and if, you know, especially if you don't actually need a phone line, because I never used my landline, is have a look at what you could you know, go in an alternative route, go with these mobile boxes and see how much a data card will cost you, how much an eSIM will cost you, or, or how much, you don't even have to have an eSIM, you can actually have a physical SIM with some of these places, but work that out with how much these phones cost. Um, and I'm not happy with Apple phones anyway, because as soon as you contract up, your phone just seems to go on the go slow and won't update. Oh, so annoying. Uh, anyway, that's my rant for today. Yeah, move away from these big corporations, charging a fortune, absolute madness. So, what I get, well, so I was doing my kitchen at the weekend, a couple of coats, mm. it's taken four coats to cover those tiles, um, but I'm nearly done, and I'll show you at the weekend when I've finished it, I haven't quite finished yet, it's taken longer than I um, imagined. And the saga with the estate agents and the buyer, Ugh. wow. Despite numerous emails between me and the agent, and I told him to put my house back on the market, and he basically is like, no, let's wait, let's wait. She's going ahead with it. And I said, well, why has she not done her legals? Oh, I've been talking to solicitors. And, oh, he's just full of shit. He really is. Excuse my language, but... He is. But Tuesday morning comes, and this bamboo surveyor just turned up at my door, and I'd specifically said he wasn't to come, and one of the agents was with him. Um, and then the main agent who just lies turned up and well it was a bit of a showdown in my living room and he's just talking nonsense every answer is different to the one before and, um, oh she is going ahead with it um, I speak to the sisters all the time I said well how much where is she on her legal work well I don't know well then you're not talking to them no, they told me they got the memorandum. It's just useless, absolutely useless. And he's, oh, you shouldn't put it back on the market. You should see this through. She's a cash buyer, blah, blah, blah. Well, uh, yeah, a person with a mortgage could have gone just as quick as she's going. And I'm just like, I'm not putting up with this. So I said, fine, you've got two weeks. You know, I said, and at the end, I said, you know, I I'm going somewhere else. And he tries to waffle on and I'm like, Anyway, I think the neighbours must have heard it in the end. I don't like confrontation. I don't like being that annoyed with someone that they you know, make me argue. It's just so frustrating. Just do your job. But um, in the veins of manifesting my future travel life, though, I did... Um, I did book some of my accommodations for Portugal and uh, Kuala Lumpur, and mainly because I don't want to miss out. I've researched these apartments for ages. Um, and one's on Airbnb, because the one in Portugal, Porto, was on booking.com, and then it sold out, and it popped up on Airbnb, and I thought, oh, I really don't want to miss out on this apartment. Uh, so um, I booked it because, of course, I can cancel. And uh, the same with the Quilla Lumper one. Um, so I'm trying to manifest it. But I was also thinking that even if I hadn't sold my house by then, um, the only thing that really stops me going long term is this flipping house 
and trying to get house insurance to cover me for more. I managed to get, uh, I think I can go for 60 days now. My house can be empty and I'll still be covered. So it just means I have to come back and forth um, a bit more. And that's to the expense of the flight. And that's the problem is it doesn't mean I can't still go, but just means I have to come back every two months. But it is the cost of the flights and the cost of, you know, yes, I'll get rid of BT and I can get rid of Amazon Prime, although I still use my videos on that. So, and I can get, but you can't get rid of your council tax and your, or whatever they call it nowadays, and you can't get rid of your utility bills. So it's just, it's something I have to sort of work out financially, but it's not going to be within the budget I'd hoped. Anyhow. Ah, the sun is out. It's been quite nice today, so uh, always a plus. All right. Well, um, oh, no doubt I'll be battling with BT a bit more later on today and tomorrow. I'll catch up with you at the weekend. Thank you.